Yoshi Tan asserts decisively without looking me in the eye. Once again, he starts the next topic with a quick, by the way. The girl that was with you, the one who seemed into the occult and stuff, what happened to her? You mean Himeno? Yeah, yeah, Himeno-chan. Weren't you together? I inflate my cheeks without thinking about it. When he notices, I become embarrassed and look down. I rest my hands on my knees and moving them up and down say, I don't know. Ah, uh, you're a pretty easy read, Mei Chen. Got into an argument, did you? It has nothing to do with you here, she said. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Dude, calm down. You just saved your fucking life. Still, you do get that there is something foul about this aquarium, right? Mei Chen, you experience that yourself. And his words of pain of pain surges through my chest. That room with the rotten corpses, the sudden cracking of the tank and the jellyfish booth. When I think of the same essence could happen to Himeno, I instinctively leap up. Speaking honestly, I have no desire to see Himeno's face, but knowing that the whole aquarium is dangerous, I can't come down. What ifs? Imagining possibilities alone makes me want to cry. Oh god, he's really close now. Wait a second, Mayu-chan. You must be tired from all that's happened. Moving quicker than I do, Yoshi-san's hand holds me back. I'll go look for Himeno-chan for you. I'm more knowledgeable about this place. You wait here. As he says this, Yoshi san gives a thumbs up. But surely she's not in this time axis! Right? Or maybe. Maybe we all entered it when we entered the aquarium. Oh my brain. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's just, let's just carry on. Okay. It was a mystery to me. We had only just met today and had an inconsequential conversation, so I wondered why he had come to rescue me. He was even showing concern for Jimeno. He was supposedly he was supposedly a total stranger, so why? Uh Okay, bye. Without hearing my response, he starts walking away from where the jellyfish booth is. His face and profile made me feel very reassured. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna save, because this is gonna be a big decision. Alright, what? okay, what's happening? Oh my god, we can go please hear she san and get a bad ending. Please wait, I'll go, it's the good choice. Let's, let's get the bad ending. Oh god, I'm scared. Trusting in his masculine appearance, I bow deeply. In reality, it was as he she san had said. I had very little stamina to begin with and now fatigue was building up inside me. Deciding to stay standing up was good, as these heavy legs of mine were proof of. As for things with Himeno, I would be best to talk them through later. If we talked them over in this tense state, we probably would just get into another argument. Here she said might even serve as our mediator. As expected in this gloomy building, he didn't have to walk far before he disappeared. The sound of his gradually fading footsteps had also disappeared. The only thing I could hear nearby was my own breathing. That's why that high, roaring scream pierced right through my eardrums! Uh, Kenji? It was a scream that seemed to have echoed through every corridor. No, in and out of the whole building. It wasn't just someone shouting, but someone crying out as if splitting apart their throat. At a sense of impending danger that voice bore, my own throat began to tighten. That scream. That voice wasn't merely familiar, it was the voice of Hyoshi-san, who had been right in front of me just one minute earlier. After that single loud scream, I could no longer hear his voice. We've time walked into a disco now. <laughs> Hyoshi-san! I'm in a disco now, help me! I quickly stand up, running to the source of the scream. This place connects the tube tunnel booth and the souvenir shop. So I heard the voice coming from, but I went towards the tunnel tank. Hey, what's up? Mayu chan, I told you to wait there for me. More importantly, that scream a minute ago, did something happen? You just stand sitting at the entrance of the tunnel tank, not far from the aquarium entrance. In my question he gives the wishy washy reply of you were worried about me, I'm so happy. Now, it's just a somewhat embarrassing story, but it looked like there was a person floating inside that tank. Under the circumstances, it just surprised me. What the f- What? 
the, 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 the what? The person in the tank. Speaking of which, he might have mentioned something like that. But I'm glad I thought you'd gotten caught up in some terrible situation like I had earlier. I was relieved from the bottom of my heart. Following that relief, I became aware of my own fear of being isolated again. Chuckling, Yoshi san scratches his head. Say, may you chat? I never got to hear the rest of what he was going to say. Huh? It all took place in a matter of seconds, leaving me unable to make sense of what had happened. However, I gradually realised what was unfolding before my eyes. From here, she sends neck up. I could see through the tank. Did he just get his head chopped off? Is that what we're saying? What? What? Uh. I didn't understand what I was seeing. In other words, his head was no longer where it should have been. Oh my god, what? Having lost a piece of himself so valuable to the human body, he collapsed slowly on the spot. From there, he never moved again. Soaking up the blue lighting, his reddish black blood spread across the floor. Oh my fucking god! Oh no! This time it was my turn to split my vocal cords. Oh my god, how did he get his head chopped off? Why? How had he gotten like this? What could have happened to have left him in the state? Yoshi-san's head tumbles along the ground and catches my eye. His eyes are wide and his pupils dilated. The grin I had seen hours earlier still spread across his face. There were marks on the nape of his neck as if his head had been bitten clean off. He, 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 san I intended to run. I intended to run and leave the dead he, san Whatever left of his bite marks was still nearby, but I couldn't do it. Was that our turn? Did it bite our head off? It hurts. The area below my knees become pitch black? What? My boots. Mom. There was no pain, only the visualization of pain running through my mind. In spite of losing my legs, I can't actually feel the pain. Oh shit! It took our legs off! Of course not. That body of mine has lost its legs. I'm watching it from a separate place. The subjective point of view would have been impossible while I was alive. My head was already like Yoshi-san's, just rolling around on the floor. The cold temperature of my blood, that was the last thing I felt. But before I lost consciousness, I saw its unbelievable true form through the wavy mist of my fading vision. With many fangs and a giant body, it was a fish. It was a fish? What do you mean it was a fish? Decapitation one! There wasn't gonna be more! Oh my god! No, Hiyoshi son! Why? <laughs> wow! Wow, that escalated quickly! Okay, wow, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man. Okay, just so you know, this guide I'm working from literally only has like the choices on them. Like what's good and what's bad. It it doesn't have anything else on there, so I can't like cheat and see what's gonna happen. I have no idea. Wow! You just Okay. Alright. Decapitation one. Watch these all be like decapitations. <laughs> Decapitation a hundred. <laughs> Fuck me. Okay, let's let's load up. <sighs> okay. All right. Wait. Let, let's make sure we get this right. Um. Please, Yoshi-san. That was the death one. 
please wait or go is is the one we've got to take. Okay. Right. This is the stupidest thing. Somehow moving my heavy legs, oh, I follow behind Hiyoshi-san. Would have been easier to leave it to Hiyoshi-san. However, we now know that he gets his head chopped off and then I do as well, so that's probably a bad idea. Since the souvenir shop is near the entrance, Hiyoshi-san's heads... Tw oh, heads toward the top. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I read Hiyoshi-san heads, I pictured him with like three heads popping along. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I think this is driving me a little bit insane. Holy crap. Okay. If the limo, if the, uh, the, if the meadow is still in the building, then we need to look everywhere for her. I'm able to catch up with here, she said, before we enter the tunnel. If she's in this timeline, she's fucked. We just gotta see her head roll across the floor. I'm going to. Huh, Mayuta? I told you to wait there for me. I can't do that because Himeno is my friend. When hearing what I say, Yoshi-san gives me a patronising look without grinning at me. Looking into the tunnel from the outside, I realise it hasn't changed from the mountain aquarium I'd seen earlier that day. Large fish like manta rays and sharks swim about. This is the tunnel tank. If you two went in order earlier, then shouldn't we start with the first exhibit? I nod, as what Hiyoshi san said is right. He adds right and walks on. I notice something there and pull him back. Look, over there. I say as I point to an area nearby that's visible from the entrance. As the silhouette becomes clearer on close observation, I become frightened. Something hops freely from side to side, it bounces about the tunnel numerous times and stops itself. After bouncing up and down on the floor several times, it ceases to move, completely exhausted. Is that the fish? Straining my eyes from far away, I can see that it is a fish! No, run away! From what I can see from its ten, from ten metres away, it has sharp fangs and a body as thin as a rail. That might be a cutless fish. It likes to rip heads off. Here she sand mutters this, having laid eyes on the same thing I had. Still, fish are creatures that can hop up and down around a room like that. Alrighty, alrighty, here, here we go. Hold on to your butts. What's happening here? Uh, decapitation one we've done. We should get a better look, it's the good way. At any rate, let's head inside as the bad end. Did I just save it? I can't remember. Yes, I did. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Orange your butts. Oh Jesus! I suggest to him. Guess we should. It'd be good to get a look at something like. Uh. <laughs> oh no! It's the capitation too. <laughs> I never got to hear the rest of what he's going to say. It all took place in a matter of seconds, leaving me unable to make sense of what had happened. However, I gradually realised what was unfolding before my eyes. Is this the same? I think it's the same. Yeah. I don't want to skip it in case it, it is slightly different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay, yeah. Oh jeez. Do we get... Oh, there goes our legs and our head. Okay. Alright. Uh, yep, yeah, it, it hurts. Okay. Fucking hell. That is fucked up. It's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. <coughs> Capitation 2, we did it. We did it. <laughs> All right, good stuff. He actually said no. Oh man. All right, we're getting through these endings. This this is pretty good. Ending list. Can I ah? Decapitation two. 
Good stuff. All right. Load here. We should get a better look. Okay, good. Good. After waiting near the entrance for several seconds, a fish resembling a cutlass fish bounces around the tunnel and then flops down on the floor, causing the amount of fish corpses on the floor to increase. Wait. What? That's when it flops down on the floor, causing the amount of fish corpses on the floor to increase. Okay. The gathering of numerous fish scales reflects the fluorescent light back onto the collider, back like a kaleidoscope. Though it is the same as the fluorescent lighting, the light reflected back is vivid, putting the sensation of the scale's slipperiness in my mind. Oh, that's pretty creepy. Yoshi-san's lips curl up in disgust as he grumbles. I also thought it was creepy, but compared to the rotten corpse I had seen earlier, it was far, it was as far back as I allowed my memory to go. <clears throat> Could that be the one that chopped your heads off here? Yeah. In contrast to Yoshi-san, who had averted his eyes, I just continued to stare and was able to pick up on something. There's fish hopping around, but they're coming from below, from that place that looks like a vent. From the beginning of the tunnel, the fish hop up intermittently. It doesn't appear as though they're going to stop, with a new fish popping up after a fixed interval of time passes. Fish mechanically shoot out of the vent, ricochet about the tunnel at high speed, then finally they're bigger exhausted to die as they land on a pile on the floor. The fuck? The moment they fall, the fish's long, narrow bodies wriggle like snakes. They collide with the other fish as they cease moving, the next fish hopping to its death in the same manner. They are! Good eye, Mei Chan. So many strange things have happened that I'm probably becoming used to them. Unable to bear these strange circumstances any longer, a self-deprecating smile reaches my lips as I give a light laugh. Whoa! At the same time a fish leaps up, Yoshi-san takes a handkerchief from his pocket and tosses it to a giant cylinder. The fish places the handkerchief once, it dances in the air, and the fish passes through wait. And the fish passes through it a second, and a third time as it bounces repeatedly. In an instant the fabric he tosses has become dust. Placing myself in the handkerchief's position, I subconsciously cover my neck. It shouldn't penetrate this. Himeno thought having a form should mean it's it isn't going through. A form, a dead body. I didn't want those words to pass my lips, but it was definitely as Yoshi Sam had said. Mei Chen, you don't remember where you and Himeno Chan split up, do you? I looked down and tilt my head to the side. I'm worried about Himeno. I can no longer make baseless statements like, Himeno is fine because she is Himeno. Reality is that if Yoshi san hadn't rescued me, I'd no longer be in this world. There's no way I can let that happen to Himeno. I have to hurry and meet up with her, and then find a safe place. Okay. We're still in the tunnel. Okay, well, we need to do it once over the building. Yoshi Sen knocks on a panel that is to the left if you are looking in from the entrance. I hear it make a hollow sound before he pushes the panel in, making a rattling sound. The panel opens. This isn't just a display, it's also a door. Contrast to the nature of a reminiscent blue exhibit space before the door, a mechanical grey hallway stretches before us. The dim white fluorescent light flickers and fades on and off. Okay. Is this the staff passageway? <coughs> Correct. When I came to him... Music is not reassuring me. <laughs> when I came through here earlier, I saw some employees, so I was lucky it had been left unlocked. Could the fact that the lights are on mean that someone just came through here? Even if they had, that person should be aware of all the unusual ph phenomena here. Anyway, if we go through this passage, we can circumvent the tunnel and look for him in chan Alright. Yoshi Sam walked ahead, taking several steps before I stepped in. I was hesitant about walking through the staff passageway without permission, but it was clearly better than going through the tunnel tank. Moreover, if we were able to come across a staff member, we might be able to gain some information about this mountain aquarium. Oh! Big sister? 
soft pasture is approximately 10 metres, just wide enough that people can barely pass each other. Walking up ahead of me, Yoshi-san's shoulder width is so great that I wouldn't be able to pass him unless he turned sideways. Even more than before, Yoshi-san seems stronger and more reliable than ever. Big sister! Oh god! Huh? That voice that I thought was just in my head bore a silhouette the second time. Made me suspect that it was probably an optical illusion. Behind me, I was sure I had heard a nostalgic voice. What's up, Mayo-chan? Yoshi-san asked me without turning around. I squeak out that I'm fine and turn my attention to his back. Ah! Oh, fuck off! However, that was my confirmation. It was neither a visual nor auditory hallucination. The voice calling me, Nori's voice calling me Big Sister, definitely come from behind me. Murray! In order to hold back, I let the name slide from my lips. The next moment I wanted to see Murray so bad, I turned back. You can't, Mei chan Oh, hi. My eyes were open, open wide in surprise as Yoshi san plants himself firmly in front of me. Arms spread wide, I had unconsciously, unconsciously backtracked to the passageway entrance, back to where we had started. Huh? Suddenly going back, don't you remember where we came from? Where is Mary? I see, he moved without hesitation, as if you had been called, so I thought that's what it might be. Calm down, Mary Chan, there was nobody there. But the voice! There is no voice, alright? Calm down, you have to calm down. His expression as he calls for me to calm down is frantic. A crease appears in his forehead as he strains his voice. I steady my breathing as I stand in fear of his threatening attitude. Breathing deeply, I keep my back against the wall of the corridor. As my determination rises, so does my body temperature. Oh! Listen, calm down, calm down, calm down. Here she said, I I'm alright. Calm down! Uh, 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 what? Are you alright? Oh god! My words don't seem to be reaching Yoshi san at all as his eyes open wide and his voice rings out. Like a broken DVD player, it cannot pass, move past that one syllable. Yoshi san? I back up instinctively. However, as if he's completely unaware, Yoshi san just keeps yelling in a strange voice. Yoshi san, please tell me you're okay, aren't you? Three meters away from Yoshi san, I peer at him. Ways, his legs are unstable, but he's definitely moving towards me. Oh god, what is that happening? 